Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Drake and I'm going to demonstrate how to do this um, color mixing in these value bars. And I want you to think about this as phase one and two. So you're gonna do the first two bars as phase one and the second two as phase two. And for the phase one, you're gonna need a color, a hue like red, and then you need white. Notice how there's more white. This color, red, is much stronger than the white, so you'd need much less of it. And the way you want, I, the way I usually do this is I start with the hue, and I put that pure hue in my first block. So this is just the red by itself. And don't um, <clears throat> hesitate to make, think about doing two layers of this. So you can do the first one and then let that dry or just go back over it and um, make a nice coating of that on your paper. Get right into those corners and when you're done, you really don't want to see those pencil lines. You just want to see the color. So now what I do is I have my pure color and on my brush, I have some of that red. And I can even take a little bit of it off, wipe it off a little, and then take what's left on the brush and mix my lightest light that I'm going to get. So here I want my lightest light. That's actually, it might even be too dark. So. I might use this for my second lightest and get make another puddle. I have another mixing tray here for an even lighter version of that. Something like that. Because you really want, in this value bar, you want to have uh, a nice uh, extended range of value. So there's um, very light. I could probably get it even lighter if I wanted. See if I can get an even lighter one here with what's on my brush. Yeah, that's even lighter. I might go with that as my lightest light. And then I can get a little more white to it. All right, so now that I have my lightest light, I'm going to put that on this end. So I have here a light value on one side and my darker pure color on the other and make a nice coat of that and I'm using printer paper just like you are going to be using get right into those corners now I could, I've already mixed this little bit darker one. I might just take that now and do the next level. Now, when you do this, you want to see a definite difference between the two colors, but you don't want to see a big jump. So do these two look different enough? That's your question. And if they do, if they look different enough, but it's not a big jump, then you're probably good, which I think that is the case here. So now I'm gonna to go to this other little puddle I made here, which was supposed, should be even darker, but it's not looking that much darker, so I might add a little bit more red to it. And by doing it this way, you really have a lot of control See, look, it's definitely different, but it's not a huge jump here between these two. And the point of this is for you to know how to mix all the different values you might wanna use in the split screen assignment or any painting assignment you do. So you, now you can see I've got a light and then a little bit darker, a little bit darker. Now this one is gonna be my middle tone. 
So I want that to be even darker. So I'm getting this to be a little bit darker. Let's put it right there. Yep, that's darker, but not too big of a jump. Might take some of that that I mixed a lot of and mix it in with some more. Ooh, I got too dark. All right, I might use that for the next jump and then take what's left of my brush and try to mix that middle tone again. It's not quite dark enough. And I want I need a lot of this middle tone because I've got to. Once I get this square filled in, I can then go and fill in all of the circles in the next bar. Let's see if this is good here. Yep, that matches it pretty closely. Might be a little bit lighter, but still pretty good. Try to go right up to those edges with your brush. Get a nice, even coat. go. Now I can take this, but I should probably use a smaller brush because I've got a pretty small, I think mine might be a little smaller than yours. Um, so I'm going to try to do this with a smaller brush. And I'm just going to take that middle tone that I just mixed and I'm going to go down and I'm going to put that in all of the circles. So every one of these circles has to have that middle tone in it. Oh, I hope I don't run out. Looks like I'll just make it. All right, so you saw that I used that same middle tone in every single one of these circles. I can try to make them look a little nicer. All right. All right, so now I can keep going. Um, I started to mix this color, which is pretty dark, but it might be the right value to go next. Let's see, let's test it here. Yep, it's darker, but not too big of a jump. Put that right in there. And now that I've got my middle tone all in that circle already, I could even start to pull down this color into here and do it right around that circle since I already have it mixed and on my brush. You don't want to see any white around here. So you should be able to see a difference between that circle and the color around it. And now I have to mix an even darker value for my final color here. Let's see, is that darker? It is, I might push it even darker. There. And fill in that spot. So you see a definite difference. Try not to have any white spots. I see there's a white spot here. Um, but don't have that. Go right up to the edges. All right. 
Okay, I might have to go back and fill that in a little bit here. dark. Oh man, I messed that up. Don't do this. <laughs> really didn't want that white in there. Okay, I just messed that up. Don't do what I just did. All right, let's move on. All right, so now I'm going to bring down this color here. Just make sure you don't have white between things before you move on. I think I'm going kind of fast because you know I'm demonstrating it and I don't want this to take too long. All right, so now you're just gonna go around every one of these circles with all of the values from the value bar. So you have to try to remix those lighter ones and I'll try to fix what I did there um, and try to make that uh, circle be better. Don't go over the circle. And then for this last one, I have to go around it with this pure color. All right, now already you can see how the circle, this middle tone that I put in every single one of them, notice how it looks darker here when it's surrounded with something lighter and looks lighter where it's surrounded with something darker. And that's the simultaneous contrast I want 